Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm Rudy McLennan coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. Republicans in the United States are attempting to reverse a regulation that would withhold school lunch funds from districts that do not meet White House standards on transgender issues. The United States Department of Agriculture's Food and Nutrition Services will put into effect the new regulation, which was changed last year in what it says is an attempt to curb discrimination against transgender pupils. Republican Senator Roger Marshall of Kansas and Congressman Scott Franklin of Florida filed legislation to repeal the rule. The new regulation applies to schools that divide sports, toilets and locker rooms based on biological sex rather than supposed transgendered identity. Marshall said that President Joe Biden's America requires public schools to endorse Democrats' extreme transgender agenda or lose funds. He also alleged that the president was ruthlessly pressing his irresponsible ideals on Americans and children. A delegation from the World Council of Churches had to abandon a part of its visit to Nagorno-Karabakh on Tuesday following a surprise attack by the Azerbaijani army. Church leaders were on their way to visit the strategic Lachin corridor linking the troubled enclave with Armenia when there was a sudden bombardment forcing them to retreat. The corridor has been blockaded by Azerbaijan for nine months, seriously affecting the living conditions of the Armenian Christians in the enclave. Azeri troops have regained control of the Armenian majority enclave, triggering a massive exodus of Christian believers. With thousands of Armenians leaving Nagorno-Karabakh, Turkey is planning to have an overland route through the corridor to its ally Azerbaijan, with the apparent aim of boosting trade. In Northern Virginia, an off-duty police officer's timely intervention helped stop a potential mass shooting inside a church. The police officer arrested a heavily armed suspect in the vestibule of Park Valley Church in Haymarket, which is 40 miles west of Washington, D.C., on Sunday. 35-year-old Rui Jiang was armed with a loaded handgun, an extra magazine and two knives. Earlier that morning, he had posted threatening messages on social media from the parking lot of the church building. This prompted a woman to alert the police, who rushed to Jiang's home to find it empty. They then broadcast a call to respond to the church, with the off-duty officer arresting the would-be assailant. Residents of the Iraqi city of Karakosh observed a candlelit vigil on Wednesday night in memory of all those who lost their lives in a blaze at a wedding celebration. The vigil was held on the street near a church dedicated to St. Bechnan and his sister Sarah. Residents of the Christian majority town prayed for the souls of the victims and for the healing of those being treated in local hospitals. On Wednesday evening, Syriac Catholic Patriarch Ignatius Joseph III Yunan arrived in the town to console the families of the victims. On Thursday morning, the Patriarch offered Holy Mass for the souls of those who died. He also led the burial service for people who perished in the flames. Eighteen young Americans were ordained deacons in St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican on the 28th of September. During his homily at the Mass, Archbishop Paul Coakley of Oklahoma City told the new deacons that it was not enough to be good churchmen, but that they must be disciples. He said that in a society hostile to Christianity, Christians and their leaders must be prepared for marginalisation, persecution and even martyrdom. The new deacons hailed from some 16 American dioceses, with one of them belonging to the personal ordinariate of the chair of St. Peter for former members of the Anglican Communion. American Cardinals Raymond Burke, James Harvey and Edwin O'Brien concelebrated the ordination mass with four other bishops and several priests. The Australian Catholic bishops have publicly supported the yes vote in the upcoming Indigenous Voice to Parliament referendum. Bishops Charles Gauchy of Darwin and Vincent Long of Parramatta issued pastoral letters explaining the reasons behind their decision. Bishop Gauchy said it was crucial to recognise that a yes vote will be viewed as another vital step towards healing for the Indigenous peoples. Bishop Long said the plebiscite will be a critical moment in the life of the nation. He said enabling Indigenous people to have a say on the issues affecting them is a matter of the heart, common sense and justice. The Yes Vote campaign is part of an effort to amend the constitution and recognise the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples as the first peoples of Australia. An American survey has found that only about two-thirds of Catholics believe in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. The survey was published by Georgetown University Centre for Applied Research in the Apostolate on September the 26th. The survey interviewed Catholics last year and found that 64% of respondents believed that Christ was truly present under the appearance of bread and wine in the Eucharist. 
However, the survey also found that only 17% of adults attended Mass at least once a week. It was aimed at clarifying the findings of a 2019 Pew Research Centre survey that found that one third of American Catholics agreed with church teaching about the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. The Pew analysis published in August of that year said that nearly 7 out of 10 Catholics said they personally believed that the bread and wine were symbols of the body and blood of Christ during Mass. According to a report presented to the United Nations General Assembly by the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, the number of aircraft and helicopter attacks on innocent civilians in Myanmar by the junta has intensified. The research claims that airstrikes have been coupled with policies that systematically prevent wounded individuals from receiving medical attention. According to the Burmese non-profit Nian Lin Thit Analytical, over 90% of airstrikes were conducted in areas where there are considerable numbers of Christians. According to the document, between February in 2021 and July this year, the Burmese military conducted 988 airstrikes. The UN body called for an immediate cessation of violence in Myanmar. Russian authorities have convicted an evangelical Christian for refusing to fight in Ukraine. Vyacheslav Reznichenko said his religious beliefs did not allow him to fight in the war, and so he was sentenced to two years and six months in a penal colony. Although he fought the verdict in five courts, the court in Primorye rejected his appeal. Reznichenko hails from Zarabino in eastern Russia, is married and has a four-month-old child. His predicament was made known to the outside world by the International Union of Evangelical Churches. Since the start of the mobilisation of troops in September last year, military courts in Russia have reported close to 3,000 cases of desertion. In 75% of such cases, the judge has issued a guilty verdict. Global Humanitarian Response Ministry Samaritan's Purse in the United States now has a new airlift response centre in Greensboro. The charity's head, Franklin Graham, dedicated the new facility on Tuesday. It includes a large hangar, office space and the capacity to facilitate a wide range of maintenance activities for aircraft. It will be manned by 21 people, including pilots and flight engineers. The new facility was built to support the two largest cargo aircraft, the Douglas DC-8, and the new Boeing 757. The cargo hold in the 757 is equivalent to the space of three tractor trailers and can accommodate some 67,000 pounds of goods. The new facility will enhance the organization's capacity to respond to disasters quickly. In the past seven months alone, the organization has flown eight million pounds of cargo out of Greensboro on 185 flights to 55 nations, including Turkey, Iraq, Haiti, and Sudan. The iconic Sagrada Familia Basilica in Spain's Barcelona marked an important phase in its decades-long construction process this week. Work on two towers dedicated to the evangelists St. Matthew and St. John was completed on Thursday this week, while the statue of an angel representing the evangelist St. Matthew was placed on top of one tower on Wednesday. The figure of an eagle symbolising St. John was installed atop one of the four towers the following day. Sculpted by Javier Medina Campani, sculptures are now atop the four towers dedicated to the four evangelists. It was in 2022 that the statues of a lion and an ox representing the evangelists St. Mark and St. Luke respectively were placed atop the other two towers of the unfinished basilica. The magnificent edifice was designed by the famous Catalan architect Antoni Gaudí, incorporating Gothic and curvilinear Art Nouveau styles. In Cameroon, a Catholic priest was severely injured when armed gunmen attacked his parish in the southwestern part of the country on Tuesday. Father Elvis Mbengansi of the St. Martin of Tours parish in Mamfe Diocese suffered gun injuries on his legs and left hand. The shooting of the Mill Hill missionaries priest is the second serious incident in the parish. Previously, newly ordained Kenyan priest Father Cosmas Ondari was murdered in the parish. The shooting took place around midday in the school section of the parish complex. Gun-wielding men on motorbikes entered the compound at around 11am local time and ordered the teachers to exit. When the priest came out, he was shot. After the assailants left, the injured were rushed to hospital where the priest was diagnosed with a serious leg fracture. The Swedish Prime Minister has summoned the head of the armed forces and the police commissioner as part of an effort to stem gang violence plaguing the country. This comes amid a wave of violence that has claimed at least 11 lives this month alone. 
on Thursday, a woman in her 20s was killed when a bomb damaged her house in Uppsala early in the morning. The previous day, two people were killed in separate shootings in the capital city of Stockholm. Prime Minister Ulf Christensen's centre-right minority government came to power with the promise to stem gang violence. The government has given greater powers to the police and harsher punishments for gun-related crimes. Christensen formed the government after last year's election with the support of the anti-immigration Sweden Democrats party. He also blasted the previous Social Democrat government for the problems facing the country. In Africa's Niger, at least 12 soldiers were killed in an attack by hundreds of armed militants on motorbikes in the southwestern part of the country on Thursday. While seven troops were killed in close combat, five others lost their lives in an accident while rushing to provide reinforcements to their comrades. The attack took place 118 miles away from the capital Niamey in Kandaji, near the border with Mali and with Burkina Faso. The Defence Ministry is yet to confirm which group was responsible for the attack. Local offshoots of Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State are active in the region and carry out frequent attacks on soldiers. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us again next time for more. And do remember in the meantime, you can always visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.